So we're going to look at L'Hopital's rule in the, uh, there's only one form that uh, L'Hopital's rule is defined in. So we'll start with the theorem. It's actually called L'Hopital's rule, even though it's a theorem. So if you call L'Hopital's theorem, that's totally fine as well. So this is L'Hopital's rule. Hypothesis, if <coughs> limit of fx over gx as x approaches a is undefined. So what does it mean to be undefined? Zero, zero, or infinity over infinity. So that's what it means to be undefined, one of those two. So g of x cannot equal zero. What's that? g of x should ne never equal zero, and that's what this thing uh, is for. So if the limit of g of x as x approaches zero is zero, and the limit of f of x as x approaches zero, uh, a, a is also zero. So if you take your limit and get zero over zero or infinity over infinity, you can use L'Hopital's rule. So if this is undefined, then lim x approaches a fx over gx is equal to lim x approaches a f prime of x over g prime of x. And that's the end of the theorem. <laughs> Pretty short. This is not to be confused with the quotient rule. It was absolutely not the quotient rule. Maybe it's what you dreamed the quotient rule was, but it's not the quotient rule. So I'll write that in red. Warning, this is not the quotient rule. The limits of them have to be zero or infinity, yeah. That, and you can't mix and match. You can't go zero over infinity, because that would be zero. And infinity over zero is most likely positive or negative infinity, depending on if you're positive or negative zero. So those two, you can't mix and match. It's either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Uh, and we could talk about what happens if you get uh, zero over five or something like that. Uh, zero. So that's not going to work. And what about if you got 5 over 0? Most likely it's probably positive or negative infinity. It depends on which way you approach 0, basically. So if, if we're approaching 0 from the positive side, this would be positive over positive. This would be positive infinity. Uh, basically, you're looking at a vertical asymptote if you graph your function out. And this is all Calc 1 stuff. So if you get a number over zero, you're, you have a vertical, vertical asymptote in your graph. And it depends on what side you're approaching, whether you're going positive infinity or negative infinity, and what the particular function is. Yeah. Yeah. So the function will definitely be, a, uh, well, I shouldn't say definitely. Most likely, your function is undefined at A. Uh, and the question is, uh, what happens in the limit of f over g? All right. And of course, the quotient rule is definitely not f prime over g prime of x. So the quotient rule is definitely not that. So don't let this mess up your quotient rule. Maybe in your dreams, that's what the quotient rule is. All right, there's L'Hopital's rule. And we're going to apply it. In the first example, so in Calc 1, we did address uh, quotients that were 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity by using either the physicist method or looking at high powers of x and then deciding what was, what was really going on. 
So we're going to do something very different. And in this problem, because it's 3x minus sine x, we really don't know how to handle that very well. I could do some algebra and split it apart. Uh, but let's use L'Hopital's rule instead. So before I use L'Hopital's rule, I better make sure that it's one of the two conditions. So I got a fraction, so there's a shot. And let's go ahead and plug in 0. And what is sine 0? Zero? 0. So all this tells me is I'm allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. So you need to show me that you have a 0, 0, or infinity, infinity. So now I'm going to use, and I'll write this in blue. <coughs> I'm going to let you be lazy and just write L apostrophe H for L'Hopital's rule. Uh, what you're really writing is using L'Hopital's rule, So you write LH, and I'll know that that means you're using L'Hopital's rule. You satisfy the hypothesis. Uh, this says the limit x approaches 0, 3x minus sine x over x equals lim. The l limit value never changes, just the functions become their derivatives. So we have 3x minus sine x derivative. over x derivative. So we're just going to take derivatives here. So good news is our x turned into a 1. So no chance we're going to have another problem. The denominator is just 1. So we can go ahead and take the limit now. And we get 3 minus cos 0 over 1. What is cosine 0? 1. So you have 3 minus 1. Don't need to write over 1 anymore. So that's going to equal 2. So looking at the chain of inequalities, our original limits on the far left and on the far right is our value of 2. So we just show the limit is 2. Questions on first L'Hopital's problem. What's that? A good amount. It's not coincident. It's not coincidental. We just did natural logs before. Well, there's more indeterminate forms than the two that I wrote on the top. No, so that's where it gets more complicated. Is there an infinite number more? No, I think there's eight. Approximately. One, two, three, four, five. I have five here, five more here, plus the two we had. It would be neat if there was eight. It's like a sideways infinity. <laughs> I have a feeling there's seven now. <laughs> so our next one, we'll s keep approaching zero. All right, so show me this is 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Apply L'Hopital's rule and hopefully get a number. Infinity is also valid. If you get infinity, just regular infinity or negative infinity, that's also OK. That's a limit value as well.
So on my work on the board, I did skip the step of writing the square root as a half power, and I just went and took a derivative as if it was written as a half power. But you may want to write that in intermediate step, depending on how you feel about your uh, derivatives of square roots. If you've taken 200 derivatives of square roots of stuff, you can do this right here. And if you're on your 10th or 20th derivative, maybe not. Um, when you were originally writing the lim x approaches zero, all the way back in, I think it, all the way back in calculus, right, like the first week or so, you wrote a line in between the lim and the x approaches zero. I was wondering if I'd get marked off for accidentally doing that because I've accidentally picked up that habit. I don't. So we did algebra a lot in. Don't write it like that. It looks like a fraction. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there was our next example. The next one we're going to do will be a little different. So the first two were intentionally easy. We have to build confidence before we destroy it. All right, this looks suspiciously like the first one. All right, so figure out what it is. And I'll give you a hint, you're going to use the Slopey Tiles rule. Like every question, in this sec every example in this section. So we started with 0 over 0, applied L'Hopital's rule, and got 0 over 0. Oh, man. Well, what can we do when a limit is 0 over 0? Apply L'Hopital's rule. <laughs> there we go. Remember, the only condition you needed was 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So apply it again. You do have to tell me L apostrophe H a second time. Every time that you apply it, you need to write down either I'm applying L'Hopital's rule or just LH. Anybody remember the from Calc one limit of sine x over x? It was one, but let's pretend that you didn't remember it. Let's pretend you didn't know this limit was one. You can apply L'Hopital's rule another time. So you're gonna get one six times zero over zero. So you're gonna apply L'Hopital's rule another time to that limit.
So apply it again, you get the limit is 1 or 1 6, depending if you factored your 6 out or not. So your final limit value is 1 6. So I line these up in a way on purpose. So I, right here, I took the derivative of basically what's above it. So right down here, I took the derivative of what's directly above it. And then right down here, I took the derivative of what's directly above it. So if you know, if you think you're going to have to apply L'Hopital's more than once, you can try to line things up in a smart way so that you're just taking a derivative of something close by. So there's the basics of L'Hopital's rule in a nutshell. Uh, we did it. We looked at it using inequalities back in Calc one. It was just a uh, special limit value from Calc one. Okay. We did it geometrically as opposed to using L'Hopital's rule. And I think we did it way back in chapter one before we even had. Oh, we used an inequality in chapter one. We used geometrically and then applied a limit to it in chapter two. So if you have a polynomial, then you drop a power each time. So I can say f with certainty for a polynomial, there's a finite number of derivatives before your polynomial is just either a constant or zero if you go one too far. Like if I do another L'Hopital's rule, which is illegal because it's not zero over zero, I would get I would have a problem because uh, I'd have zero. That derivative of one would literally turn into zero. So if that ever happens, you went too far. So you want to sometimes take more than one L'Hopital's rule, but don't go past, don't take too many L'Hopital's rules. So if you don't have, there's only two ways, 0, 0, or infinity, infinity. Those are the only two ways you're allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule. And even then, you actually cannot apply L'Hopital's rule until you've rewritten it as a fraction. So it will be, basically for it to work, you'll have to be able to write it as 0, 0. Yes. All right, so zero times infinity and infinity minus infinity can also be indeterminate. And I'm actually going to change a word from undefined to indeterminate up at the top. So way up at the top in L'Hopital's rule, where it says is undefined, I'm going to use the word is indeterminate. What's indeterminate? Uh, unable to be determined. <laughs> so, uh, Indeterminable. Uh, uh, I want to know uh, why zero times infinity is indeterminate. Because ah. we always learn that uh, zero times any number is zero. Yeah, so, is in, so first of all, is infinity a number? No. No, no, it's a thing that's bigger than all the numbers. Okay. So we have zero of those things. But the problem is that's something you can't really <coughs> conceptualize of. Um, so this is going to show up in a limit. And what's going to happen, you're not going to have, so if it was actually the number zero, so if you actually had zero times lim, x as x approaches infinity. So if you had this, uh, that would be a little different. I need to think about that. But what we're going to have is a number that's a uh, quantity that's approaching 0 times a quantity that's approaching infinity. So it'll, they'll neither separately, neither will ever be 0 or infinity. But they'll be getting close to those two numbers. Um, and the reason infinity minus infinity is indeterminate, well, uh, depends on which infinity is bigger. Maybe they're both similar size. Maybe the first one's bigger, then it might be positive infinity, or it might even be positive 6. If the second one just is a little bit bigger. Um, and if the second infinity is bigger, it might be negative infinity, or it might be negative 42. You never know how much bigger, how much smaller each infinity is. Is that, is that treating infinity almost like a 
almost like a large number rather than a number? Nope, we will never treat infinity like a number. And how is the difference between 3 and 6? So. Uh, very carefully. <laughs> it's usually going to be 0, infinity, or negative infinity, generally. Okay. But it could be other. I think you can get any number out of there, but let's we'll do some examples. So let's plug in infinity. When the world's one over infinity. Zero. Zero. So we got infinity times sine zero, which is infinity times zero, and that is indeterminate, right there. I'll just write in debt. All right, it, now, is that zero over zero or infinity over infinity? Nope, there's no division happening, so it's certainly not that division. So what we need to do is turn this into a fraction that's either going to have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So how do you turn a product? So if I just told you, hey, you got two numbers, a times b, and you have to turn into a fraction. So we could write it. There's two ways to write it. One way is this. Basically, you're forcing a factor to the denominator. And you do that by writing it as a reciprocal. The other way to do it, does A have to go there? Nope. We could shove B down there. Same exact way. So that's how we're going to turn a product into a fraction. You just pick what you want to push down the denominator. Make sure you reciprocate it when you do. Does it matter in this case? Usually it won't matter. A lot of times there'll be one way that's a little easier. So basically you're going to make a function more complicated if you write it as it's reciprocal. So do you want to make x more complicated or sine of 1 over x more complicated? Yes. Yes, correct. So you pick the easier one and shove that to the denominator, usually. You don't have to do that, but the problem is if I write, so if I write this as x over, when I go to take my L'Hopital's derivative, I'm going to have just immediately either a chain rule or a quotient rule, depending on how you handle your denominator. Uh, so you could go this way, but my, this is going to be more of a pain to take my derivative of this denominator. And this also looks a little nicer because it already has a 1 over x in two places. So I can tell my chain rule, what I get out of my chain rule is actually going to cancel just looking at this. So have I actually used L'Hopital's rule? Yeah. Nope. In fact, I've really done no calculus. This is just algebra right here. So I haven't done any calculus. So you don't, it would be incorrect to write L'Hopital's rule. Because we didn't actually use it yet. We will use it soon. So now we're going to plug in infinity. So sine, oh, 1 over infinity is 0. So we get sine 0 over 0 which is 0 over 0. And now we can say we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. What in the heck is derivative of 1 over x? It is not natural log, which I said it and then wrote it. Derivative 1 over x. So derivative 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Or negative x and negative 2. 